Here are Marlon and Ronnie talking about RADCAM. Yeah, we're, we're interested in the distribution of light um, in a geometrical sense. So we have a camera that's sitting up on the deck of the ship that's measuring how much light is coming from different directions from the atmosphere. Then we have another set of cameras that are in the water that are measuring how that geometrical distribution is altered by the sea surface initially by the waves and the uh, differences in the refractive index between air and, and the sea. And then as the uh, package descends into depth, it measures how that radiance distribution is altered by the optical properties of the ocean, which you can then use how that uh, changes as a diagnostic of the constituents of the upper ocean. Now, our main red cam, our main instrument, uh, is, a, is a profiling instrument, and it has uh, two high dynamic range cameras, one that points up to measure the downwelling radiance and one that points down to measure the upwelling radiance. Other sensors include a CTD, an irradiance and radiance sensor, and a transmissometer. The sun is so much brighter than the other things in, in the field of view that you want to measure. Uh, and uh, until recently, um, cameras have been un unable to do that. CCD cameras are linear, and so the, the dynamic range of them is, is quite limited. Um, the, the array that we use is a CMOS array, and it's, it's specifically designed for to be a high dynamic range camera. Basically, we'll, we want to stare at the sun, measure the amount of radiance that's coming directly from the sun, but in the same scene, be able to determine accurately the radiance that's coming from the sky, which is several orders of magnitude less intense than what's coming from the sun. So this camera that Roddy found was originally designed as an automotive camera so that one could look at oncoming vehicles with bright headlights and be able to see the deer that's standing on the side of the road there just about ready to jump in front of you. And we've taken that technology and applied it to this problem in the ocean. Darius is using Porcupine to look at intensity of light in the ocean. Our primary objective within the radio program is to measure rapid fluctuations in underwater light caused by surface waves. And we are particularly interested in very strong fluctuations produced by wave focusing of sunlight under sunny conditions. This is a spectacular optical phenomenon. It can be observed for example, on a shallow bottom of the ocean on sunny days, when a mosaic of bright bands of focused sunlight sweeps across the bottom. We can also easily observe these wave focusing effects in a swimming pool. In collaboration with researchers from the Polish Academy of Sciences, we develop a special instrument, a porcupine radiometer, which allows us to measure focusing of sunlight by surface waves. The porcupine instrument consists of over 20 optical sensors looking upwards in different directions. This instrument has a unique capability to sample underwater light fluctuations with a very high frequency. Each optical sensor of the porcupine makes 1000 measurements per second. We use this data to calculate the statistical characteristics of light fluctuations and we relate these characteristics to environmental conditions, including the properties of surface waves. Our measurements at shallow, near surface depth in the ocean, require deployment of the porcupine from a stable platform, which is provided by FLIP. One of the most exciting findings uh, resulting from our measurements with porcupine instrument is that we determined that the maximum transient concentrations of solar energy due to wave focusing under sunny conditions can exceed the mean solar radiation at least by a factor of 10. We think that these very intense pulses in the amount of solar energy can have considerable implications for important photoreactions in the upper ocean, such as photosynthesis in marine phytoplankton or photodegradation of dissolved organic substances. Our measurements of wave focusing effects are also crucial for the radio program especially in relation to linking optics and waves, looking at how waves modulate light propagating across the sea surface, and also for developing and validating models that couple surface wave dynamics and optical radiative transfer.
Once the light from the sun and atmosphere enters the water, its apparent intensity and colour is in influenced by the pure water itself and the variety of optically active constituents within. Constituents include photosynthetic phytoplankton, detritus, non-algal particulates, bubbles and coloured dissolved organic matter. Some constituents, such as phytoplankton, tend to readily absorb light, which serves to remove this light from the ocean because it is converted into other forms of energy. Other constituents, such as bubbles or non-algal particulates, tend to scatter light, which serves to redirect this light. Every water constituent has unique absorbing and scattering properties. These are referred to as inherent optical properties. By measuring the way light is absorbed and scattered, we may learn about what's in the water simply by measuring these inherent optical properties. The power of this knowledge is that if we know what is in the water and how much of it is there, we can attempt to predict any observed optical property. For example, ocean colour, diver visibility and underwater imaging contrast. Matt and Scott from Wet Labs are measuring inherent optical properties. One of our primary instruments for measuring uh, in water scattering is the mascot. It consists of 17 different detectors and a laser source here. And what happens is the laser beam comes out of the aperture here um, and illuminates particles. Light scatters off at different angles from those particles and gets detected in these detectors. Based on the angular shape of, of the measurements that we make, we can infer um, some of the particle characteristics of interest. So, um, how, how big the particle is, or perhaps what its index of refraction is relative to the ocean. The first particles encountered by light entering the water are in the surface microlayer. Oliver is investigating this layer. We study the sea surface microlayer, which is the skin of the ocean, as an interface to the atmosphere. The microlayer has unique chemical and physical properties which are different to the underlying water. Natural surfactants are carbohydrates, proteins and lipids and are released by phytoplankton in much deeper waters. The surfactants travel through convection and uh, on rising air bubbles to the microlayer. We collect microlayer samples by repetitive dips of a glass plate into the water and slow vertical withdrawal. The uppermost thin layer representing the microlayer sticks to the glass plate because of its lower surface tension and then it is dripped into a sample container. We analyze the samples on carbohydrates, the major group of surfactants in the ocean. The carbohydrates spontaneously form polymer structures and eventually form sticky particles we call transparent exopolymer particles. We found that these particles are often enriched in the microlayer, stabilizing this thin layer even at typical wind speeds over the ocean. Breaking waves create, create big air bubble plumes and we believe that this supports quick reformation of the microlayer. 